Good morning, good morning. I'm so glad and feel so blessed and so elated uh, to be before you this day because of that which the Lord has done in my life. I've reached a place where I began to realize that being alive is not just a miracle, it's a blessing by itself. And for you to be connected to this channel or be tuned in this morning, to be alive this morning, I want to celebrate God for you and for what he has done. As we continue with our devotion today on launching out into the deep, would you please share with as many people as you can so that they can be able to listen to the word of God. We're going to Luke chapter number 5, verse number 5, all the way through to 7 again, which is our pilot scripture. The Bible says, But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. My brothers and sisters, there are some things that one can wonder about. There are others that one can question. There are some things that one can debate and others that one can challenge. There are those things that one can reject and others that one can disown. There are some things that can be ridiculed and there are others that one can criticize. There are some things that one can discredit and others that one can disprove. But everything under the sun is subject to analysis and susceptible to ridicule. But there is one thing that cannot be debated. It cannot be questioned. It cannot be challenged. It cannot be rejected or ridiculed. It cannot be disowned or disapproved. And that is the sovereignty of our God. He is Elohim, the God who is all-powerful. He is El Shaddai, the Almighty God. He is Mekadishken, the Holy One. He is Jireh, our gracious provider. He is Sabaoth, our watchful defender. And he is El Olam, the God who is eternally unchanging. You see, Jesus tells Peter, launch out into the deep for a catch. And Peter responds by saying, Master, we have toiled all night. But then he rectifies his statement and he says, Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. I need us all to understand this morning that the word of God not only describes faith in Christ, but it is God's appointed means to create faith in Christ. This word is living. This word is active. This word is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. God tells us in Isaiah 55 that his word that goes out from his mouth shall not return to him empty. God always accomplishes all of his purposes in every one of our God-ordained encounters with his word, whether we are reading it or we are listening to it or proclaiming it, his word will always accomplish what it was called for. There's a man by the name David Platt who said, if we want to know the glory of God, if we want to experience the beauty of God, and if we want to be used by the hand of God, then we must live in the word of God. Why? Because number one, God's word creates and sustains life. And that's why Peter said, Nevertheless, at thy word, I will. You will understand that from the book of Genesis chapter number one, everything God spoke to created that which was spoken to. When you look at Ezekiel chapter number 37, 
from verse number four all the way through to ten god used a man to prophesy to the valley of dry bones through the words of ezekiel and god raised these dead people to life because god's word creates and sustains life in the book of john chapter number 11 verse 40 all the way through to 45 it is jesus has cried out with a loud voice to the corpse of his friend lazarus and said lazarus come forth and lazarus rose from the dead because god's word creates and sustains life it is Peter who said in 1 Peter chapter number 1, verse 22 to 25, Peter told believers that God made us born again through the living and abiding word of God. We became alive again because God's word creates and sustains life. Now I understand why Peter told Jesus, nevertheless at your word I will because the word that was, the word that is, had actually appeared into the scene. Uh, you know, the, John tells us in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and nothing was made that has been made. And so Peter realizes that the one that spoke things into being, and they were created, came into the scene and had the ability, when he told him to launch out into the deep, he had the ability to cause and command the fish to come to where Peter's was. Because... That which was created respects the grace and the anointing that Jesus carried. And so Peter said, nevertheless, at your word, I will. So just as God has always used his word to create and sustain life, so also God promises that he will use his word to create and sustain life in you. The number two thing I want you to understand this very morning as you look at we look at the power of God's word is that it not only creates and sustains life but the word of God is sure. The Bible says in the book of Numbers chapter number 23 and verse number 19 in the Amplified Version, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said it and will he not do it? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good and fulfill it? God's word is sure. If God says launch out into the deep for a catch, all you need to do is like Peter and say, Master, I know this is beyond any reasonable doubt, something that I've ever done. But nevertheless, at your word, I will. Because he realizes that God is not a man that he should lie. If God said he's going to bless you, he will do it. If God says he'll open a door for you, he will do it. If God says he's going to make the crooked way straight, he will do it. If God says let all barren women sing because he's going to provide for them soon a baby, he will do it. If God says to you that go and apply your visa in the midst of the pandemic, he knows that he's got the ability to convince and convict those who are at the other side, approving staff and the moment your application comes, God begins to speak to them and they've got no any other way but to accord you what you need. Because God's word is sure. That's why Isaiah 55 verse number 11 says, So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing which I sent it to. God's word is sure. All I'm trying to tell you, children of God, this morning is that God simply wants people to trust what he has said. And that is why many Christians have trouble receiving from him. They don't take him at his word. And then they try to do things with their own strength and they fail because they have never learned just how trustworthy the word of God is. Jesus is saying, launch out into the deep for a catch. He's not mincing his words. He knows his word is sure. His word is sure. And you can be able to trust in him. It is him who says in Romans chapter number 4, 
verse number 20 to 21 in the Amplified Version. But he, Abraham, did not doubt or waver in unbelief concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong and empowered by faith, giving glory to God, being fully convinced that God has the power to do what he has promised. God's word is sure. He said, next year at a time like this you shall have a son. As much as Sarah laughed, the word came to pass because they took God at his word. They knew God's word is sure. That's why the writer of Hebrews chapter number 10 and verse number 23 in the Amplified Version tells us, Let us seize and hold tightly the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is reliable and trustworthy and faithful to his word. You can trust him. You can believe his word. If he says, this is the year of the great catch and is giving you a command, launch out into the deep. He knows what he's saying. He's not mad. He knows what he's saying. He's not trying out. He is sure of what he's saying. He's not a son of man that he should lie. God's word is sure. That's why 2 Corinthians chapter number 1, verse number 20, they are being encouraged by the word of God because they've realized that this word of God is so replete and has got the ability to be able to do so much. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 1 and verse number 20, the Bible says, For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. God's word creates and sustains life. God's word is sure. And number three, God's word has the power to redirect. First Peter chapter number two, verse number 25. Peter says, for you are continually straying like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. He's trying to say many people have improved or changed their lives in a significant way based on a desire to improve. And history shows us that only God's word has got the power to completely transform and redirect one's life in a totally opposite direction. Peter was changed from a fisher of fish to a fisher of men to an apostle because God's word has got the power to redirect. He looked at himself and he called himself a sinner. And he got into the water and asked for forgiveness from God after he saw what God's word was able to do. Because God's word has got the power to redirect. The Samaritan woman who had a problem with people's husbands when he met the word. The word transformed into the Samaritan woman. The scripture says that the Samaritan woman went back to the men and told them, Come see a man who told me of everything that I ever did. And God totally transformed her life. And she was now not interested with other people's husbands. But she became the first evangelist in Samaria. Reached out to those that she had a problem with. And their lives were totally transformed. It is God who was able to turn an organizer and a murderer. One who would go uh, to kings and, 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 and to people in authority to ask for letters to be able to persecute the believers and put them in jail. It is God whose word he was able to change the life of Paul and turn him into a, an apostle. God's word has a power to redirect. It is God who turned David from a shepherd into a king because God's word has got the ability to turn every kid into a king because that's what the word of God sees in their lives. Finally, today, as we come to the tail end of this very devotion, I need you to know that God's word has the power to reward. When he says, launch out into the deep for a catch, God means what he has said. Because he knows that that word has got the power to create and sustain life. Where there was a void, God was able to speak and there was a fullness. Where there was an emptiness, God was able to fill it up. Where there was death, God was able to bring in life. Where there was no hope, God was able to bring back hope because God's word has got the ability to create. Lastly, God's word has the power to reward. Hebrews chapter number 11 and verse number 6, the Bible tells us, For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those 
who diligently seek him. My brothers and sisters, the word however reveals who God is, what he desires, and what he is preparing to give to those who believe and obey him. The Hebrew writer says that God rewards those who look for him. And the way to look for him is to look for him in his word. God's word is the bonding mechanism between himself and his people. It is our greatest and most precious reward. And Peter got a reward of a great catch. In Luke chapter number 5 verse number 6 the Bible says, And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. Why? Because God's word has the power to reward. Isaac got a great reward and became too rich when he took God at his word. The Bible tells us very clearly, Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. And in verse number 12, the Bible says, Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Why? Because God's word has the power to reward. As we close, you can be able to bank on it. You can be able to take God at his word. Because actions are based on beliefs. If you can be able to believe him, then I believe that the next trajectory of your life will be totally different if you take God at his word. That's the power of God's word. Launch out into the deep. Nevertheless, at your word, I will. I've got no point of reference, but at your word, I will. I've never seen a certificate person applying for a degree job, but at your word, I will. I've never seen a young person desiring to be a millionaire without being an entrepreneur. And God just does something miraculous. And they begin to gain the millions because God's word rewards. Nevertheless, at your word, I will. I want you to go home with that today. I want you to go to your workplace with that today. Write in that Uber. I want you to think about God's word and that which it can be able to do. I believe the Lord has blessed you. I believe this word of God has been revelatory to you. And my prayer is that you shall not only be a hearer of this word, but we shall also be a doer of the same. And my prayer is that as you take God at his word, you will begin to see things totally turning around for your good. You are the blessed of the Lord. See you again tomorrow because it was nice speaking to you. As we come to the tail end of this devotion, I'm so sure that the Almighty God will have deposited something fresh in you. And in this year of the great catch, you shall not just hear or see people having a great catch, but you shall be a participant of this great catch. Receive it in Jesus' name. Amen.